in Hebrews, Paul is delivering a very explicit message to a very specific people. He's detailing, as it were, to the Jewish nation the reality of Messiah. He is telling them in no uncertain terms who Jesus is, what Jesus is, and how Jesus is the fulfillment of all expectations that there were for the Son of Man, the suffering Messiah, as well as the ruling and reigning King of Kings and Lord of Lords to come, who would be the Melech HaMelechim, the King Messiah, the Moshiach, who was to come. In so detailing this, Paul, being such that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Jew of most specific origination, that he had a training and a background and a knowledge not only of Greek culture, but likewise of worldly interpretations and understandings that were being applied to Judaism in his day, as well as what we see today as being rabbinical Judaism, or the traditions that came about because of a rabbi or a Jewish scholar who later codified Jewish theology into what we now have today as Rabbinical Judaism, meaning, uh, meaning Maimonides that brought about reality of the entire Jewish expression of faith that unfortunately rebelled against the time and the place of when Messiah came and took to itself the unfortunate compromise of what Jewish scholars and Jewish sages had determined that it was better for them to survive than it was to accept a man whom they determined was not the Messiah. Paul, once being Saul of Tarsus, once being a Pharisee of Pharisees, once being knowledgeable in the Word of God, had been taught by Jesus himself as we read in other books of the Bible and we understand where Paul came from and how he attained to this knowledge that would bring grace and mercy not only to the Jewish nation but likewise would cause the Gentiles to be accepted and grafted in to this wild idea that it wasn't only Jews who were to be saved but that even as God had said to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed it was to be his progeny that all the world would be saved to Jesus himself. It's a serious subject that Paul is addressing because you see today in modern days as we saw in verse 1 there are people who seek to prophesy and to say things that are not through Jesus. They seek to tell us what God has said and what God intended for us. They seek to put us into the bindings and the strappings of the law by tying it upon our forehead and making it as forefronts between our eyes so that we should obey the law as portrayed by Noahide or Mosaic law as rabbinical interpretation has come about and as the messianic type personification of it in ways that Gentiles have sought to try to make a moral code become a legal code that we should bind ourselves to and strap them on our hands and make it such that the Ten Commandments would be of greater value than what Jesus said. We have verse 1. God at sundrise times and diverse manners spoken times past unto the fathers by the prophets. And so if we were left there, then of course we would have to yield ourselves to the word of prophecy as it comes by way of the prophets, as it comes by the way of the masters of religion, as those who teach us as sages and wise men, as pastors, as teachers, as elders, as deacons, as those who have studied the Torah, as they have known the word of God, even the New Testament, come to us and try to tell us something other than hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. And so we discovered in verse 1 that yes, in the olden days, in the old ways, and in the previous times, God spoke to us by way of his prophets. God spoke to us by way of his judges. God spoke to us by way of his kings. God spoke to us by way of his high priests. 
But in these last days, God has spoken to us through His Son. And so verse 1 reminds us who we are listening to. And in verse 2, has in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. Verse 2 tells us with no uncertain terms, these last days God has spoken to us through His Son. Whatever is spoken to us through His Son, you can bank on. When you hear a word from someone telling you that's contrary, that you don't quite think fits into your understanding of what grace and mercy has been accomplished in what Jesus has done on the cross in dying for your sins and eliminating all these confrontations and consternations with which men have confused the issue and tried to make you understand something that you don't know and you have a personal relationship with God and you have a knowledge of Jesus, then you know by verse 2 that in these last days he has spoken through his son not by an angel Moroni who comes to us and tells us hey the Bible's incomplete it's wrong you must follow what I'm going to say to you not by the angels that have come unto Muhammad and told him all the things that he thought he must correct in order to make it true for he was a prophet but not a prophet that was as great or greater than Jesus himself because Jesus himself in these latter days as we prove the latter days began with the birth of Israel coming back into the land the nation itself confirmed that God had put the people in the land in 1967 when Jerusalem became the capital eternal unto God forever because Jesus has spoken to us in these latter days we know who we follow and why we are called Christ-likeness, why we are Christians. Because it's not that we follow Hebrew roots. It's not that we follow Messiah. It's not that we follow God. We follow Jesus. Because Jesus has been appointed heir of all things by His Father. Because the Father has said unto Him that he has appointed him heir of all things, by whom, Jesus, he also made all the worlds. Interesting. So who is this Jesus? Is he not the creator? Is he not who he also made the worlds? According to God, which we have no ability to argue with. According to God Almighty, who has made Jesus heir of all things, it is Jesus who made the worlds. The worlds that were, the worlds that are, the worlds that shall be, the worlds that will become, the worlds. All that they are. For the Jew has always looked for the world that is unseen in the world that is seen. For they have known that the unseen is what made that which is seen. But God answers the Jew. God speaks to the Hebrew of Hebrews. God speaks to the... <sighs> Klal Israel. To those who are all of the, the children of Israel. The called of God. The children of Jacob. The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob those who have the yid inside that God has said, hey, I will take that spark and fan it into a flame. He speaks to them and says, it is this man, my son, that I have made all the worlds that are seen and unseen, that are and were and that ever shall be. This is whom, by whom he has appointed heir of all things and by whom he made the worlds. No one else do we listen to. Nothing else do we need comprehend. What we do, we set as the priority from God, by God, as he tells us. For we do not do away with any of that which was before, 
but that which God had spoken before, we now are told to listen to He whom He has spoken to us now through His Son in whom He is well pleased. And He has told us in the Gospels, likewise, this is my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. We can argue, we can debate, we can say no. We go by what God was in the Torah. We have seen the yud heh vav -Heh. We have never spoken a word. We have written, we have inscribed, we have kept faithful to thy name, O God. And God has said, but my son I have sent unto you. My son I have said will reveal to you. My son, I have made heir of all things. Will you listen to the heir who, by whom all things were made? Will you listen? There are people who want to go to Old Testament and make something more than what God has said it is for. For surely God has chosen to give us His entire Word to understand, to know, to be revealed to us the very nature of God, the very power of God Almighty and His love. The very personification of who God is, His mercy. The very nature of what God does, His loving kindness for they all endure forever. And this is the personification of who God is. For surely He has given us His Son to reveal to us in these last days what it is that we, He would speak unto us. For we are that generation that exists in these last days. We are the last generation. We are the people of God who needs to know what God would say what God would speak, what God would tell us, why have we waited so long and not seen with our own eyes? Why have we not heard with our own ears? And why do we not understand with our own understanding? And why have we been blind all these years to not know that you have spoken, Almighty One, and that now you are revealing to us your Son, whom you have appointed heir of all things, by whom you are the Creator. O oh God, forgive us. O oh God, hear us. O oh God, have mercy upon us.